Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 1. The word of the Lord also came unto me saying. Now this is after Ezekiel had the visions. He goes back to Babylon. And we last let off. He, he spoke to all the people. So when he's done speaking, the Lord said, okay, got more. And we're going to get into some great revelation of fulfilled prophecy. Again, running down that parallel road with Jeremiah and Second Chronicles. I mean, the end of Second Chronicles records Jeremiah in the end. Son of man. Thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house. Isn't that great what God has to say about his people? And yet his people, we read in chapter 11, you know, the rest of you get out of here. You don't need to serve the Lord. This land is our land. This land is our land. This land is not your land. From the sea to sunny sea. They would say from the river to the sea. Sound like a little pride there, like, like America. God says, my people are rebellious. Have you read Revelation 3, what God says about the church age? We are in the Lazarusine church age. You make me sick. I, you know, you make me vomit is a lot worse than God says you're rebellious. You know, we were at a place, as I won't say, but, but I mean, there was just children not behave and just running all over the place. That's rebellious. And I'm not being, you know, he's thinking, well, that, that was a great dinner you made last night. This makes me want to bark. <laughs> okay, which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear, they hear not. For they are a rebellious house. Is that, is that remarkable? There's their eyeballs, but they don't see. There's their ears. They don't hear. Now, you would say they don't hear because their big mouth is moving. Well, what's the excuse for the eyes? I don't like the Old Testament. It's boring. I got to keep saying that. With Ezekiel. You know how Jeremiah, we had America and Ezekiel I keep saying the Old Testament. So, let's run to Psalms. That's Old Testament. People say, I like to read my Psalms. Psalms 115. Now you can also go a repeat Psalms 135 verse 18. But Psalm 115 and I want verse 5 but I want verse 4. Listen to Psalms 115 verse 4 also repeat in Psalms 135. This is a double. This is a very very it's important. You realize there are more in the Gospels of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there is more in there about Peter's mother-in-law than there is a birth. Of I just read today, Mark. And, you know, they went into Peter's mother's house. I'm like, wow. I just, just said to myself in my mind, you know, Mark didn't mention the birthday of Jesus. Now I'm reading about his mother-in-law. Peter's mother-in-law. That was in Matthew. And I'm going to call to remember, is it in Luke and John? <laughs> But still, it's more than the birthday of Jesus. This is double. It's repeated. That was a bunny trail. It didn't cost you nothing. I said I was going to read verse 4. The idols are silver and gold. Silver and gold. I, I, every time I hear that, I think the, the, the Rudolph reindeer. The works of man's hands. You got that? You ready? They have mouths. They speak not. They have eyes, eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses they have, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet they, ha they have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. Look at that. I, I, I don't understand what the Bible said. Run to Ezekiel and you'll just understand. They have idols in Ezekiel, so they're just like their idol. The, the idols have got ears and eyeballs, but... You can't use them. Try to go up to the Pope and explain to him the Bible. He ain't going to hear you. He ain't going to listen to you. He ain't going to have anything to do with you. You're in Nathan. Now, a Catholic who's not involved in the stream Catholicism, who is willing to listen and willing to... Oh, you know what? I, I, 
I'll see what the Bible says. They will, they will hear. But they make it to the point that the ears will not hear no longer, but they will hear. But look at that. Ezekiel said, I'll read to you, they have eyes to see, they see not, ears to hear, they hear that. Bingo! They're, they're like their idols. And Jeremiah told us they're all over the city. But how about this one? Mark chapter 4. And God's so great because I just read Mark 4. You know, I had a little time when I did this study. I said, you know what? I'll do my Bible reading now, say it later. And I'll see why. Because God says, I want to show you something. In Mark chapter 4, verse 9. And this is quite frequent spoken by the words of Jesus. He said unto them, they have ear, that he has ears, yeah. He hath ears to hear. Let him hear. Implying implying there's their ears but they're not listening how many of the Jews got right by Jesus none very few you realize that there are times that Jesus especially in his hometown he's it'll say many of the sick he healed many of the devil possessed it says it didn't say all why did it say all why didn't everybody get healed in Jesus hometown unbelief they heard with their ears, but they didn't listen. And everybody who's involved in evangelism, as, as I'm involved in evangelism in, in Daytona Beach, six years, I've been preaching the same message, same message, same message, same message. They hear it. But, you know, they got to the point now they can ignore me. And the only one that can't ignore me is the one who gets all the complaints. <laughs> Unless that guy over there screaming. Uh -huh. I've watched them. They will sit at their table and they just don't care. They had the ear, they hear the preacher, but they're not listening. That's the same thing that happened to, to, to Jesus. That's the same thing that happened to the psalmist. That's the same thing that happened to Ezekiel, back to Ezekiel. I don't know what you're talking about. Then you're not in a public ministry. I don't care if you're door knocking, I don't care if you're passing on tracks, I don't care if you're an open Bible, I don't care if you're street preaching, I don't care if you're holding a sign. If you don't understand ears to hear and they're not listening, you're not you're not going all the world preaching the gospel. It's that plain and simple. I mean, you hear there's a hell, there's Jesus saying, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. You know, not the judge, judge not least you be judged. I'm not judging. Verse 3. Therefore, son of man, prepare the stuff. Now, well, here goes Ezekiel's going to be the sign again. Jews require a sign. Ezekiel. <laughs> This is the same thing, but not as bad as everything that happened in Egypt. The darkness, the plagues, the, the locusts, the, the, the water trend. Ezekiel is that same thing. He's that sign. And Pharaoh had a dream of, of these cows, and the cows were eating the cows, and the, and the ears of corn were eating it. This is the same thing. Signs. Prepare these stuff for removing. Okay. And remove by day in their sight. I mean, you're not going to do it in a U-Haul. A you're going to put it in a bag or some kind of... And thou shalt remove from thy place to another place in their sight. Ooh, wow. It may be they will consider, though they be a rebellious house. All right, I want you to be a sign. I want you to, to get your stuff... And you're going to move from one place to another, and they're going to watch you, and you're going to be like, what are you doing? Okay. Then thou shalt bring forth thy stuff by day in their sight, as stuff for removing. And thou shalt go forth at even dark, 6 p.m. That's even in the Old Testament, even 6 p.m. In their sight, as they go forth into captivity. All right, so 
Now, okay, what God's telling Ezekiel, you're going to be a son. Remember, there are three captivities by Nebuchadnezzar. The third is the final. Ezekiel's between the first and the second. Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and the gold. We're coming up to the third and final. So while he's in Babylon, he's prophesying and preaching the word of God to the Jews that are in Babylon. Jeremiah is preaching to the Jews, the Ju Judah in Judah in Jerusalem. And Ezekiel is going to tell them in Babylon what's going to happen in Jerusalem that Jeremiah is going to tell us happened. <laughs> and if you find the Old Testament boring, dig through the wall in their sight. <laughs> this is twice he's done through the wall. The first time you open up to a movie theater or an art gallery. Well, if they can dig through the wall for their movie theater art gallery, be not deceived, God's not mocked whatsoever man so is that each other also reap. You're going to dig through the wall to get away. You're going to dig through that wall not to, not to please and amuse yourself in sin, but to get out. So dig through the wall through the site and carry out thereby. In their sight shalt thou bear it upon thy shoulders, and carry it forth in the twilight. So there, I want you to do for them to see. Thou shalt cover thy face. Thou shalt not see the ground. Blindfolded. I have set thee for a sign unto the house of Israel. There it is. Everything Ezekiel does is for a sign and a wonder. It's a wonder. What are you doing, Ezekiel? Oh, yeah, he's talking about it. It's Jehovah. Jehovah this, Jehovah that. And that was their attitude. And I did so as I was commanded. No, notice that Ezekiel does not badmouth. Well, why do you want me to do that for him? What's the purpose? All right, you want me to do it? I'll do it. And I brought forth my stuff by day. In the day, he gathered all his stuff. as stuff for captivity. So it's not much. You can't grab, them, grab much when you're being held off by soldiers. And in the evening, I dig through the wall of my hand. And broke it forth in the twilight and bear it upon my shoulders in their sight. Alright, so he does all this. Exactly what God tells him to do. And they're watching. But he didn't do it on the Sabbath. That would have got their attention. You know, they were rubbing corn to disciples in the cornfield. And they got all upset. You're, you're breaking the Sabbath. What, what, what work was that to do to rub? Never mind. In the morning came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, There's more. Son of man has not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said unto thee, What doest thou? So say, Ezekiel, yeah. What are you doing? You're making a mess. You put a hole in the wall. That would turn people away from the Lord. It's not what my pastor does. It's not what I let my light shine. Well, Ezekiel said, God said, put a blindfold on. Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, The burden concerning the prince of Jerusalem, all right, the government of Jerusalem, and all the house of Israel that are among them. So this sign is pointed directly at the princes and the authority of Jerusalem. Say, I am your sign. Like I have done, so shall it be done unto them. Okay.
they shall remove and go into captivity. All right, there's a, you're going to captivity. They're in Jerusalem. They're going to go into captivity, but Ezekiel's speaking this in Babylon. We'll show that in a moment. So he's telling the Jews in Babylon, I mean, yeah, in Babylon, the Jews that are in Judah, yeah, don't worry, they'll be here in a few minutes, a few done. Not minutes, they'll be here eventually. Verse 12. And the prince that's among them shall bear upon his shoulder in the twilight, and shall go forth, and they shall dig to the wall to carry out thereby. Notice twilight. They shall cover his face, and he shall not they shall that he yeah, that he see not the ground with his eyes. Okay? Jeremiah thirty nine. Jeremiah thirty nine. Verse number four. We'll just read verse 3 for context. <clears throat> and all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate. Even Negro, Shizizer, Sham, Uber, Nebo, and the residue of the princes of the king of Babylon. And it came to pass that when Zedekiah, the, the king of Judah, saw them, and all the men of war, then they fled. Not just Zedekiah. They fled and went forth out of the city by night. By the way of the king's garden and, and, and the gate to his two wall, and he went out by the way of the plain. And But the Chaldeans' army pursued them and overtook Zedekiah in the plain of Jericho. When they had taken him, they brought him to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Ribla, in the, in the land of Hema, where he gave judgment upon him. That's, go back to Ezekiel. That's exactly what Ezekiel just said. That's exactly what Ezekiel just said. Prophecy fulfilled. Verse 13. It's night. Verse 12. It's at night. They can't see the ground. How did... Ezekiel showed that you're not going to see. He blindfolded his eyes. How did they get out of the city in Jeremiah 39? God told us in Ezekiel later. They dagged through the wall. See, what you didn't read in Jeremiah, you read in Ezekiel. And as many times in the Bible, what you did. You see, in Genesis it said Joseph was in jail. He was put in jail because uh, Potiphar's wife. You go later on and you get to the book of Psalms and it says they hurt Joseph with the iron fetters while in jail. Well, you didn't read that in Genesis. And when you read the entire Bible, all 66 books, then you read, oh. But there are people, I don't like the Old Testament. And they, they go through whatever they do read. If they don't read, well, I don't understand. Well, duh, no wonder. No wonder. So, Ezekiel, my net, God's net, also will I spread upon him. And he shall be taken in my snare, trap. And I will bring him to Babylon to the land of the Chaldeans. Now, see that Babylon, the land of the Chaldeans? Go back to chapter 11, verse 24 real quick. Just to show you something. Afterwards, the Spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit God unto Chaldea. He's in Babylon, Ezekiel 12, 13. Babylon is the land of Chaldea. Look at that. You learn something else new. Scripture with Scripture. You see, God don't put it all in one spot. Well, you know my Bible has a concordance, it has an index and all that. Yeah, but it ain't really going to show you nothing. It'll be a help, but you got to read your Bible. You got to read all your Bible. 
yet shall he not see it. Why? Though he shall die there. Oh, wait a minute. You mean we're not talking about it's the middle of the night? Wait a minute. How is he going to be brought to Babylon? He can't see it. Is it nighttime, what you just said? Jeremiah 52. Jeremiah 52, verse 11. And we'll start in verse 10. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He also slew all the princes of Judah and Riblah. And he put out the eyes of Zedekiah, the king of Babylon, bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon and put him in prison. He can't see it because for verse 11, he's been blinded by Babylon, by Nebuchadnezzar. So they went out by night and couldn't see. The king cannot see now because he's been blind. Scripture prophecy fulfilled in Ezekiel. I don't like the Old Testament. I don't understand. My net will I spread upon him. He shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon. Okay, we read he goes to Babylon in the land of Chaldean, yet he shall not see it. Why? He's been blinded. His eyes been poked out. After his sons have been killed. Though he shall die there, Zedekiah will die in Babylon. I will scatter toward every wind all that are about him to help him. And all his bands, I will draw out a sword after him. The armies now invaded the city. The commotion. And they shall know. Uh oh. Number fifth, number ten. How shall you know I am the Lord? You are sitting in jail. Your eyeballs been poked out. You just saw your your children get killed. You are not in Judah no more. That's a hard way to know. God is God. I want to Zedekiah kind of learn later in Babylon what Ezekiel said was happening. That's what I wonder. My word should not report to return void, God said. All right, so that was number 10. That's a very hard lesson. You shall know that I am the Lord, and I will scatter them among the nations, disperse them in all countries. A number 11. Number 10, I mean. Number 16. Verse 16. I will leave a few men. And we know that in Jeremiah. There were people that went and tendered the vineyards. Then from the sword, from famine, from the pestilence. They were gathered up by Ishmael. <laughs> then they were rescued by Jehanan. Then Jehanan men stealed them to Egypt. Then they may declare all the abominations among the heathen, whether they go. And you shall know that I am the Lord, number 11 of 51 times. You'll see that in Ezekiel. How do you know that I'm the Lord? A very few people will be still left in Judah. And everybody else has been carried away to Babylon. So when you're sitting there, which probably many are not, listen, just because you're sitting there in Judah, oh, that's exactly what Jeremiah said, because Jeremiah said the same thing. I don't realize they know what Ezekiel said, but hey, you know what? What, so far, what Jeremiah said is true. I guess God spoke to Jeremiah. Fulfilled of the word of God. There will be people at the great white throne judgment. That, oh, okay, you're Jesus. My mother, the church, the gospel tract, the preacher, the person came knocking on my door. 
the, the hymn I saw, heard. That's right. It was right. Jesus, thou art the Lord. Kind of too late. People learn, some people learn too late. You know, one of the things that they may learn too late. Getting hit by a car may be painful for the rest of your life, but I'll you know, just step out in traffic. Boing! Ouch! A little too late. Now, son, hey, cook something on the stove. Don't touch that pot. Hey, just took it off the burner. It's hot. Yow! Okay, you now know. I knew, but now you know. It's hot. Too late. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many. Many are going to learn that I am the Lord God. Too late. Few will go through the straight gate that leadeth to life. They're going to know that he's the Lord. To be absent from the body, present with the Lord. Amen. Or when we get raptured. We meet in the clouds, and then we see Jesus. Amen. Everybody one day is going to know, I am the Lord. <laughs> some to the good, the few, and some to the worst, the most. And we're going to look at, hopefully, Lord, willing, if I do it correctly, I may sin, I may fail, and I apologize already if I do. But that's number 11 <laughs> of 51. And haven't you realized every time we've done these 11, that know that I am the Lord, there's been a serious consequence. Not one of them. You shall know I am the Lord. Jesus Christ popped up and said, Hi, you want to have some bread and fish? Not once did God, Jehovah, say, Hey, how you doing? See my fire? See my cloud? Some people, I've had a few people say, well, show me Jesus. That ain't going to do you no good. The nation of Israel in Exodus 19 saw God, and they still rebelled throughout the whole wilderness journey. Some people are going to know he is God when they're being cast off into hell. Plain and simple. 